Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you a true story from the life of Edmund Burke, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. And here is our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tonight, a true story from the life of Edmund Burke, the remarkable Englishman who led one of the strangest political fights in the history of Great Britain. And we're proud to present in the role of Edmund Burke, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Now here's Frank Goss. 365 days a year, hearts are lightened by Hallmark cards. Happy days are made happier. Lonely days become no longer lonely. And every day is a brighter day when the mail brings a Hallmark card. For Hallmark cards are more than just a message of cheer or sympathy or love. They are the right message, thoughtfully expressed in the right design, the right words. And that Hallmark on the back shows that you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with MGM who celebrate their 30th anniversary at your favorite theater with their new color picture in Cinemascope, Rose Marie, starring Anne Blythe, Howard Keel, and Fernando Lamas. And now, with Herbert Marshall as our star, Mr. Barrymore brings you tonight's exciting story on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. in the year 1778. The American Revolution had been going on for almost three years, and in England, the Honorable Edmund Burke was serving another term in Parliament. He was loved by his followers, but unfortunately, they were in a minority. The Tory party ruled through Lord North. At this moment in time, Edmund Burke's total and consuming desire was for peace between the two warring nations and freedom for the Americans. Burke! I say there, Burke! Could you wait a moment? Oh, Carville. That was a very good speech you made today, Edmund. Oh, nonsense. I skirted the real issue, and you know it. Oh, who can discuss real issues in these times? They're going to have to be discussed sooner or later, and it might just as well be now. We must do something to stop this ridiculous war against the American colonies. For three years, we've been spending money and manpower that England cannot afford to waste. You'd better lower your voice, Edmund. Men have been accused of treason for Treason? <laughs> Is it treason to believe that in fighting the American colonies, we are merely killing fellow Englishmen? And I tell you, Carville, if the Tory party doesn't realize the urgency of this situation, then our government is in danger. But well, why worry about the Tories yet, Edmund? Our own Whig party is against you. Not against me. Merely not yet united. Quiet. Lord North, the Prime Minister himself. And am I supposed to tremble? But he's been watching you, Edmund. I don't trust him. <laughs> because he's a Tory? No. Because of a thing I heard today. And what was that? Well, he... He said that a certain element in the House of Commons was practicing treason. He reminded several of us that treason is punishable by death. Edmund, I... I don't think there was much doubt that he was referring to you. me, sir? Oh, I beg your pardon, Governor. You've been following me, haven't you? Well, no, I wouldn't. That is, I... Speak up, man. Haven't you? Hey, let go of me, Burke. Let go of me, I say. I thought so. Who are you and what do you want? Speak up. Get your filthy hands off me, traitor. Traitor? Yes, traitor. 
Well, I've heard your fancy talk about stopping the war with the colonies. Well, I've heard the things you've been telling your friends. It's treason against the Crown, I say. That's what it is. Who told you to follow me? No one. What I do is my own business. Did Lord North send you to warn me? I... I never heard of any Lord North. You've never heard of the Prime Minister. Speak up, man. Answer me. Let me go of me. Let go of me, I say. Listen to me. Listen carefully. Tell whoever sent you that Edmund Burke doesn't frighten easily. Tell them Edmund Burke was born in Ireland and knows the meaning of freedom. There. Now go. And tell them. Carville, well done. Sit down, Edmund. I must say, you look out of breath. Uh, I suppose I am. On the way here tonight, a very strange thing happened. I was walking by the river when I noticed I was being followed. Followed? Yes, very strange indeed. What possible purpose could following me serve? <laughs> Perhaps they think you're recruiting men for the Americans. Edmund, I believe I know why. When Lord North made his remarks today about treason, I think he realized something. And what is that? I think he realized that he'd need more evidence. You can't convict a man of treason for discussing political ideas with a friend. Go on. But you could convict a man for holding treasonous meetings. Meetings? There have been no meetings. What about tonight? Here? In a pub? Three old friends getting together for beer and conversation. Surely no one, not even Lord North, could call this treason. But, but don't you see, Edmund, before Lord North can make his accusations public, he must have some evidence to support him, even if he has to manufacture it. Edmund, I'd, I'd say you were in serious trouble. Oh, it's a great deal worse than we thought. On the contrary, gentlemen. It is far more encouraging than I realized. What? Edmund, you're not serious. Don't you see, my friends? This tells us something we ourselves didn't know. This tells us we are stronger than we realized. Do you think Lord North would go to all this bother if he was sure of winning? Don't you realize the mere fact that he had me followed tonight, the fact that he is desperately searching for any evidence with which to accuse me of treasonous acts, is proof that he's becoming afraid of the game? Perhaps you're right. I know I'm right. There's no need to wait any longer. We're going to act now. How? If North must go to these extremes, it means only one thing. That he is even unsure of his own party. But not even we Whigs are completely behind you. Are you suggesting that we recruit supporters from the Tory party? Yes. Not just any Tory, gentlemen. Well, who then? Lord Pitt. Pitt? Surely you're not serious, Edmund. He's an old man. He retired from politics years ago. He may be an old man, Carville, but he enjoys the respect of Whigs and Tories alike. And the respect of the king. Hmm? Oh, now you're really dreaming, huh? First Lord Pitt, and then the king himself. Exactly. Pitt may be a Tory gentleman, but he's an honest and fair-minded man. A man who believes in a just cause. And a man who understands the treachery of a Lord North. You think he'll support you instead of the Prime Minister? I think he will support any cause he believes to be just. I've made up my mind. I'm going to see Lord Pitt and ask him to sign a petition to the King requesting England's withdrawal from the war against the American colonies. Well, gentlemen, how about another glass of beer? That's what he said, Your Lordship. That's what Mr. Burke told me to tell you. Very well. So, Mr. Edmund Burke thinks he can oppose the Prime Minister of Great Britain, does he? Well, my friend, I believe I have here a petition which will take care of Mr. Burke for a long time to come. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're a most generous man, Lord North.
In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Tomorrow, if you open the new issue of Life magazine, you'll see some pictures that carry you back to the happiest memories of your childhood. There, in colorful costumes, you'll see your favorite figures from early stories. Cinderella, Peter Piper, Red Riding Hood, and many others. For now, these loved storybook characters have come back as Hallmark dolls from the land of make-believe. They're heavy paper dolls that stand up to be played with for hours. And they're dressed as beautifully as if they'd step right out of fairyland sparkling with sequins and bedecked with real plumes. Best of all, on the inside of each doll is printed the doll story in verse. Children will relive again and again these best love stories and learn the lesson each one teaches. Now, these Hallmark dolls cost just 25 cents each, complete with an envelope for mailing. And that's not all. There's a collector's album, too, for just 50 cents, so that youngsters can collect the whole set of 16 dolls and keep them new looking for years. Can you think of a more delightful, inexpensive gift for any little girl? Tomorrow, pick up some of the new Hallmark dolls from the land of make-believe. You'll find them at any fine store that features Hallmark cards. And now, Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Edmund Burke, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall. greatest problems ever facing a member of parliament. He had to oppose his country's war against the colonies and prove at the same time that it was good for his country. A crisis was approaching. A move had to be made. To make this move, a dangerous one, more support was necessary. And Edmund Burke, the Whig Party leader, sought this support from one of the most important leaders of the Tory party. Lord Pitt. Mr. Burke, will you forgive my receiving you among all these pills and potions? This isn't too much of a strain on your health. Talking with you is a pleasure. You're one of the few men who could induce me to discuss politics since my retirement. I'm flattered. But I hope the issue is a greater inducement. Very perceptive. I wish we had you on our side. I am on your side in this. But if I support your position, I am a general without an army. I have some loyal followers who would go where I go. <laughs> but the majority... <laughs> There's something I can get you. <clears throat> that awful looking green fluid over there. Yes. Pour in a bit up to here, sir. And then that water. Uh, there now. I'm supposed to feel better, the doctors tell me. Perhaps we can talk another day. No, no, Mr. Burke. At my age, I can't afford to postpone anything. You're a very courageous man. It isn't difficult to be courageous when one reaches my stage of life. But for a young man like yourself to risk his career, perhaps much more, that takes a great deal of courage. What's more important? Do you think I'm right? I want to hear you state your position. England must halt her war against America before we are destroyed. How can that happen? We are winning. Hmm. We were supposed to have won in a few weeks. It is now a few years. What of it? Each day continues and invites attack from France and Spain. They are just waiting until we are weakened enough. Another reason. Englishmen are fighting their fellow Englishmen. Still another reason. Our self-respect. The most important reason. But once you make this a public issue, you are in terrible danger. A petition to the king keeps it a private matter. First, it must get past the prime minister. Can you do that? I would risk it. If Lord Pitt would sign his name to it. Uh, uh, more water, please. With all the elixirs and potions the doctors have invented, there still isn't one to give a man knowledge enough to be sure he is always making the right decision. Uh, excuse me. Ah. Ah. What 
water is good. Very well. I will sign the petition. Edmund, did you see Lord Pitt? How did it go? Did he sign it? Not all at once. I did see Lord Pitt, and he did sign the petition. Remarkable. One of the Tories' greatest leaders signing a petition on behalf of the Whig Party. Not in behalf of the Whigs, Carville. In behalf of England. Nonetheless, it is a tremendous victory for you, Edmund. You should be very proud. Aren't you forgetting something? Lord Pitt's signature is important, but it becomes meaningless unless we can show the petition to His Majesty. Yes, and in order to do that, it must be first presented to the Prime Minister, eh? Huh? Lord North has the power to decide whether our voices shall be heard or not. Not quite. With enough people behind us, North doesn't dare refuse to show the King our petition. Well, perhaps we're underestimating the Prime Minister, Edmund. I think he knows a great deal more about parliamentary procedure than to be trapped so easily. Suppose, for example, he were to call for a vote of confidence in his present policies. If he received it, your petition would be worthless. There's too little time. And the gamble would be too great. Edmund. Uh, Carville. Weldon. <laughs> Easy there, old man. This running's not good at your age. What is it, Weldon? I've just come from the Prime Minister's office, Edmund. His secretary advised me Lord North would like to see you at once. Mr. Burke? Lord North. What you have to tell me must be very important. It is. I mean greater than anything you've previously addressed this office for. What makes you think so? Hmm. To bring Lord Pitt out of retirement. To intercede in your behalf. He did not speak to defend me, sir. I don't need anyone's defense. Perhaps I misunderstood. He said he wanted me to listen to your petition to the Crown. Did he say it was mine? Or ours? I believe he said... He said ours. Because we are His Majesty's most dutiful and loyal subjects. Until it might be proved otherwise. On what basis? You defy the government. We defy the majority, which is only part of the government. Then you defy the crown. We submit to His Majesty in everything except our honor and our reputations. You make it sound like politics. It is. It is a war for the survival of our nation. Civil war. Give it its full name. The war the Americans started. Or where they provoked into starting it. They were not asked to do more than any other colony. From the Stamp Act on, you tried to dispose of the property of a whole people without their consent. I have done my duty, sir. By employing foreign troops to fight England's battles? There was no choice. You've employed savages to, to murder women and children. I never gave such an order. No, but you employed mercenaries who would do it. You knew they would. Then you turned away while they did that terrible work. Even some of our own troops begin to relish the practice. I employ troops for the crown where I can get them. And why can't you get them in England? Why the Hessians? Is the war such an unpopular war among our people? Old war is unpopular war, Mr. Burke. Few men love to kill or be killed. Then why do you persist? I told you, I am here to protect the crown. I have no choice. Then let our petition reach the king. Let the crown decide. And I am here to protect the crown, even from itself. I beg you to make some offer of peace to the Americans. The time for that is gone, if there ever was a time. Then consider the consequences. A military government is set up in the colonies which ignores civil liberties. English soldiers are trained to have contempt for popular assemblies. They cannot suddenly develop a love for liberty just because they return home. An ocean trip will not do it. And we are stupid men if we say it can't happen in England. We should hold to our position. And our possessions. But what if we win America or the empire of the world and then lose our own liberty? The bill will be submitted to Parliament tomorrow. What bill? I've heard of no bill for tomorrow. The bill will be submitted by His Majesty's loyal supporters, calling on all true Englishmen to support the Crown. I support the Crown. What is this? What are you planning? Calling on all parties and all men in Parliament to give unanimous approval to the policies of the government. 
including the war against the revolutionary colonials. What? Never. We shall never submit to that. Then be named for what you are. Traitor! We'll fight you. We? There is no we. If you dare to speak against the bill, then you stand alone and be prepared for the...